Hey guys, this is Andrew Dolan, and I'm going to talk to you guys about creating a linear motion slide using VEX Robotics components. So what is linear motion? Let's get into the details here. So here's a couple of examples from, in, from industry. Uh, this one is a pneumatic linear slide that provides straight linear motion back and forth. And this is another variety of slide. And the key advantages here are that these are sliding on linear rails. So these are the rails. In this case, they're round. And it provides very rigid motion. That'd be awesome if we could replicate something like that using VEX Robotics components. Uh, here's another variety of a linear motion slide. And that's what's hiding underneath here. These are the linear rails. They call them a THK style, but um, that's just the brand name is THK. And if we look inside of this, we're going to see a whole bunch of little tiny ball bearings. So we have the entire thing. It's like walking on ball bearings. And these have the advantage of uh, creating a low coefficient of friction. And also they have the advantage of losing all the balls if you put them together the wrong way. But um, that means that it takes a very little bit of, of uh, force to move this straight forward because it's basically riding on ball bearings. So that's pretty neat. But enough of that. Uh, how can we replicate something like that using VEX Robotics components? So that's our goal today. So let's put these big industrial slides away and let's introduce a couple of ideas here. So I'm going to keep this one out for the time being. And what I've got are a couple of large shafts. These are the quarter inch high strength shafts that VEX sells. These are a full 12 inches long. And we can see that I've, this whole map here, this mat is uh, at uh, one inch increments, which is kind of a slick thing. And you can see that, you know, 17 minus five, there's our 12 inch full length. Okay, we're gonna use these as our linear rails, much like is used in this pneumatic slide over here. And then, as you guys can see in this slide, they had a way to fix the shafts to a outside metal plate. We're gonna do the same thing here, and that uh, these shafts are a little bit different. Look at the end of that. This has been drilled and tapped for a number 832 screw to go through. So a couple of details on that end of things. Um, looking for some stuff around here. Um, I've essentially, you're gonna need to talk to somebody who knows a little bit about machining to make this part happen. That'd be a great road trip for you guys. So uh, here's a drill bit. And basically the procedure that was done was very accurately, we drilled the center of this shaft out, first step, and then put a bunch of lubricant on the tap. And this is the tap here provides the little thread cutting action, okay? So essentially after the hole has been drilled, we get in there and tap this out. That's gonna cut the threads into the end of the shaft, all right? So that's gonna be the way that we can affix our shaft to uh, the ends and we can just use a couple of little brackets here to mount them together and Then we're gonna have a carriage that runs back and forth and in this case We're gonna fix the carriage to another piece All right, so that's gonna be providing a base for the entire operation and then we're gonna run rack gears over the top edge of this and that will provide the motion back and forth with a motor riding on it so let's get into the build of what i'm going to call the carriage so this is the carriage these are the rails and these are the ends so we're going to talk about how we can build the carriage that can slide back and forth and be driven with a vex motor on these rack gears so let's get into it Okay, here's the first part of our carriage. This is a one by three C channel. And again, this mat is kind of neat because it has this hole spacing on half inch. So uh, this particular piece happens to be four and a half inches long. And in order for the uh, shaft to run through these, uh, through these holes, they had to be drilled out. So this, uh, this is the first part of the carriage. Uh, it's gonna run back and forth on these linear rails. And uh, 
In order to drill them out, here's my recommendation. Get yourself uh, one of these. This is a step drill bit. All right, throw that into your drill. And then just as a quick demonstration here, um, it's pretty easy. Of course, I'm wearing safety glasses and everything. Uh, we can drill these out. All right, and just like that, we've opened up the hole for the appropriate size shaft. And if we feel like it, we can get in there with a little deburring tool and get rid of the nasty burrs on the inside of that. All right, so now I've made a mess. Got chips and stuff all over my beautiful mat. Wipe that clean. And back to our carriage design and construction. So um, those have been drilled out and you can see the location of them. Um, when we affix the shaft, it's going to be five holes apart. So um, we have this, just take note of the pattern here of holes that you're seeing. And then take note of this little notch. Uh, just through experience, I've found that when the rails, when it's sliding back and forth on these rails with the configuration I had, it doesn't leave a whole lot of room for bolt heads to stick through. So another neat little tool um, I want you guys to look at is a, a notcher. This is a neat little deal. Uh, you can see that there's a little notch that's been shaved out of the hole that's just inside here. And that's again for uh, bolt holes so that when this is sliding back and forth, there's just a little bit of clearance for the bolt holes to slip through. So this notcher, neat thing, um, it has a little notch thing that cuts and I'm just gonna go ahead and trim this out. And that just is all we need to open up. You see how slick that was? Just notch that chunk of aluminum like it's nothing. Obviously, if you have a, a, some younger folks that may not have as much hand strength, this is a little bit more challenging, but uh, cutting through the aluminum isn't too bad. So again, this notcher, the job here is to create um, just a little bit of clearance for the bolt holes to slide through, the, the bolt heads. So with that done, I'm happy. And you guys can see what that little notcher did, just the tiniest little shaving. A real slick tool. Um, so look for those if uh, that's something you're interested in. Now we're gonna go ahead and bolt our bearings. These are gonna be, um, you know, typically there's a design for rotational movement, but in this case, we're gonna have them set up for uh, linear motion. So these are gonna provide the bearing surface for the carriage to slide back and forth on the rails. So I'm gonna get those bolted up. Okay, so I've got the bearings installed and I'm really a fan of these particular drivers. These are made by MIP Tools. And so check them out. Uh, I've not had many problems with stripping screws once we move to this variety. So, and every time we tighten up these bolts, uh, you wanna make sure that they follow the German standard, that they are gut and tight, right? So important stuff. Uh, otherwise, if your fasteners are not tight, they're gonna fall apart. So that's step one of the carriage build. And now we're gonna work on getting the motor mounted. And we are back. So uh, in this case, I've got three standoffs that have been added. These standoffs are one inch in length and uh, we've added three in this orientation. So check that out. And we also added a bearing. Now, this is a large, uh, one of those uh, high strength shafts, but notice that I did not drill through for this one. That hole is still regular. That's actually a great way to keep the shaft, shaft captive inside of there. Once I get this fully assembled, that shaft can't slip out in that direction. So uh, this shaft, by the way, has been trimmed so that it is at 1.75 inches give or take, a little dial caliper to tell me. And I, I can also hold it up to the uh, uh, scale here. 1.75 inches is what we're looking for. So now we're gonna go ahead and start assembling the rest of this. All right, so here's our 1.75 inch long shaft. I've got the 12 tooth gear on there. And then a couple of these, um, what are they, 16th inch spacers. And that turns out it gives me the just the right distance that I'm looking for. So we're gonna put this into our assembly here and then slide it down. And that ends up just about perfect for the spacing where that gear is now flush inside of there. Let's talk about this little piece here. This is just a chunk of, uh, of five wide flat. 
and uh, I've got a hole drilled in there and <clears throat> this is going to be riding mightily close to the teeth of the linear rack. So note that this is shaved pretty tight along here. Um, so it's a little bit biased this direction. Uh, if you are wanting precision, well, we grab the caliper and say, all right, uh, we've got about 85 thousands that is left here. So a mark for you to reference. So we're gonna go ahead and assemble the motor to this and get our carriage finished. So then our next step is to locate this right here and fasten it down with our screws and <clears throat> we'll worry about getting whoops drop the screw oh no oh no um we'll worry about getting the rest of this put together momentarily so go ahead and drop the three screws into this assemble okay so that has been assembled and uh, the screws are done. Now the trick is to get the motor in here and hopefully I've cut the motor shaft to the right length so we can slide that motor on and also I wanted to point out that this this rotates really cleanly inside of there. Very happy with that. So let's get the motor situated and in place. That's gonna go in here and um, I'm gonna put some interesting little spacers through here. So I'm gonna use a long bolt on this first one with some spacers to get that motor attached, that uh, long one through here. And um, they had, you know, I, I, again, use whatever substitutes you need to, but uh, I've got some long spacers that I'm gonna be using. And of course, one of them rolled off the table. Um, so I'll have to locate that and get back to you. Okay, these are some of those spacers I was talking about. They came with uh, the V5 cloth uh, kit. So uh, again, use whatever substitutions you need to to make this work. Uh, and it, it's going to be a little bit of a battle to get those in. Um, let me see if I can keep that shaft in there. All right, so we're going to use a long screw that goes through the whole works. So I'm going to hold that long screw into place and see if I can't get the short little spacer that's uh, eighth inch long. And then the other spacer, kind of wedge that in there. And I might have to loosen up some screws to make this happen, but I'll fight with it. But I'm going to get that spacer in there one way or the other. So maybe if I just uh, loosen up these guys and... No, she's wanting to fight a little bit, so. See if I can get that spacer to ride in there. There, there it went through real nice. Okay, so now that spacer is in place, allowing me to rotate this bolt fully and thread it into the motor shaft. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, get my um, motor lined up. Come on. There she goes. And then into that location. And that's pretty slick. That spacer allows me to get the motor tightened all the way through from the opposite side. So didn't have to fight with some screws inside there too much. That's good. And then we'll just throw one more screw in there. Okay, so this is the whole carriage assembly. It's uh, completed. We have our um, it's pretty compact design. The motor allows that, or turns the little rack gear, um, opinion gear, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, so replicate that, and that's what I would call the carriage that's gonna be sliding back and forth on the rails. So our next step is to build the rails. So again, here's those 12 inch high strength shafts, and each end has been drilled and tapped for an 832 screw to go into. So that's what's gonna be what fastens the ends of our, what we're gonna call linear rails uh, together. So we simply grab some screws and we're gonna fasten one end together for now. All right, with one end fastened together, the other end is free. We've created um, the starting point of our linear rail assembly. Now we're gonna slide the carriage over the top of that assembly. So we slide the high strength shafts through there and voila, so we are ready to go to install the other end of this linear rail assembly. All right, so here's a little uh, 
tip when assembling this. So I've got both ends on here, but I'm noticing that it's a little bit tight in terms of um, you know, the, the amount of friction that I'm getting on one end versus the other. So to fix that, there's a bit of uh, wiggle room slop inside the bolt holes back here. So if we just loosen these guys up and have the rail slid all the way over to that end, then once the rail is on that end, tighten up these bolts again that hold it together. And you should find that the friction has been uh, reduced and we've got the spacing as good as we can. So that's the basic start of our linear motion system. Now we have to make the rack, um, sorry, put this on a base and get our rack gears installed. So our rack gears are gonna mount on the top side of this C channel all the way across. So uh, I think I'm just using full sections here and I've got three of them. So this is a, um, what is it? One by five C channel. This particular one is 13 and a half inches in length. Uh, yours could be whatever you need based on your travel. Mental note. Uh, don't use half inch long screws when assembling the rack gears. Uh, I did that and it broke out. So uh, use 3 eighths inch long. Good tip. Okay, so we've mounted the rack gears all the way across this piece. I uh, just started flush on one end and worked my way across. And now we've got our linear slide assembly. And if we've done everything nicely, it should snap on here in a couple bolts. And uh, looks like the bolt holes are lining up. Uh, I did have problems on some of these where I had to adjust the bolt holes. So uh, it has to do with how this piece was cut. You know, uh, the end here was actually cut off of a piece of one by five. And the dimension is a little bit higher in one direction than it is in another. So. Uh, in this direction, it is about one, uh, a point two one zero, and in this direction, it's about uh, point one uh, fifty five. So we want to make sure that it's the taller direction, and if we do that, then it should stand up properly. And since this is twelve inches long, Vex likes to build everything on half inch increments. The bolt holes line up on this end and then they align up on this end without incident and we just throw a few bolts in there. All right, so we just threw the bolts um, one step in. It just helped with a little bit with the alignment. Uh, so they're on that end and they're fixed on this end. Our rails are pretty rigid relative to the rack gears and the pinion gear. Um, as we drive it back and forth, the pinion gear is about perfectly aligned. Again, we're maintaining Vex's half inch rule and that allows this all to line up beautifully. So this is one of the better linear motion slides I've seen uh, created with using the VEX Robotics system. And some of the other ones uh, just don't have the rigidity or the alignment. So this is a great step for you guys. And it's a reasonable approximation of the industrial linear slide that we started with. So, all right. Well, hey, that was it. Uh, good luck to you. Happy vexing. Catch you next time.